Alrighty, today is going to be part two of yesterday. Yesterday we talked about the second skin. Uh, just a quick recap for you guys before we jump into the idea. Second skin, or at least what we talked about yesterday, was this concept of smart clothing. Clothing that had sensors, tons, dozens, hundreds, maybe even thousands of miniature sensors in the future that would be sensing different, that each sensor had a different job uh, and was looking at different parts of your body and gathering data. Uh, and with this, being able to help prevent something before it actually became a big issue. Um, we may go into that a little bit more in this video, but I wanted to just jump in first to what exactly second skin is, because we didn't get, in, we didn't get into that in the last video. So I think it's only fair that we very quickly, in the beginning of this video, talk about that, and then maybe we can back up a little bit. So, when we spoke about this, right, clothing, you can think of normal clothes that happen, um, you can think of having normal clothing as you have today, right? And everything's the same. Fabric's supposed to stay the same. You know, you wear a t-shirt, you wear shorts, you know, all, all of that is supposed to stay the same because the idea behind these sensors is they're not like chips or they're not the same way that you would think a sensor is. They would be woven into the garment. They're, they would be part of it. You wouldn't really know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't affect the comfort uh, of your clothes. But I was thinking of something a little bit future, something a little bit more, that you didn't constantly change with different um, seasons, didn't constantly change um, when you wanted to just change clothes, where there would be a layer. I almost wanted to separate the form and the function of clothes, the form and the function of these smart clothes. And now imagine if we could have one layer that dealt with all the functions. So the function, the, the regular function of clothes, which is uh, to regulate temperature, to re regulate your body, uh, cool you down or heat you up or keep you dry, all those different things, right, which are inherently part of clothes, those are the function parts of clothes. But add to that all those things that we've talked about with sensors and more. So this is what I was visualizing as a second skin. I was visualizing almost like a, like a, really really thin transparent layer almost like when you're you know when you're in um, pre-prep or you when you're in kindergarten and you chucked glue on your hands and you like put them together and when you start opening and closing and suddenly when the glue dries you're able to peel it apart and it just felt like like a second skin like that a layer that was its whole job was to almost stick to your body to not feel like it's it's it wouldn't feel foreign, it wouldn't feel apart, it would just be something that would be there. And it would do all these jobs. It would contain all the sensors. It would regulate all these different things. The 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 fabric, I don't know if, even know if we can call it a fabric, but the the particles that make up this this second skin could come together, hug tighter when it wanted to warm you up. Right, not allow, not a, keep the keep the elements out, uh, and maybe open up, become more breathable, like physically, right? Open up and contract on a very very tiny scale. But when you do that all over, it's almost like you have another element that's doing things. Like we know that a lot of different animals have different skins, different furs, different ways of combating the element in their area. Like we have animals that can live in extreme cold because their body, uh, whether it's a second layer with like a fur or feathers. Um, on top of the skin or whether it's the skin itself that is able to help them regulate the temperature and live in more extreme um, Environments so almost like that where the skin can do that as well The skin can also not just regulate like by closing it open, but maybe send via different methods different Let's say pulses and, and, and change temperatures and I'm gonna bring you an example of actually a video that I was shared with again and I watched it today um, but it's just another it's a it's a it's another example of a lot of these um, kind of suits coming out and this is going to take us to the next level of not only does it have all those different things that we just spoke about but also this is something that helps you exist and control the augmented and virtual worlds so you already have body suits, you have lots of companies. It started off with gloves for haptics, then it went into uh, shirts, it went into suits. I've seen lots of different areas. I've seen from like the idea of having them as gaming devices, where these would have like crazy base at different parts of your body. It was like a, it was like a vest you strapped on. 
um, and it would target different areas of your body, but it would be such an intense, for music, it would, it would be a, like a crazy experience because it would like deliver bass straight to your body. And so when you felt music, it felt like it, like, it was just a crazy intense experience. And then they had it in games where different parts of your body would vibrate, you know, if, if you bumped into something. Um, or if you got shot, it would feel differently. So you have a lot of those bodysuits which are trying to convey some of that feeling, some of that touch back to us from the augmented and virtual world. And also ways that if we wanted to interact, right? If I wanted to hold an object, some of these gloves and, and uh, gloves particularly are there to kind of, some of them stop my fingers at a certain point. So the virtual ball that I'm seeing or the augmented ball really feels like it's there. Others use ultrasound. There's so many different kind of concepts, but these kind of suits were there to um, get information and to interface, interact with, with the virtual worlds. Uh, if you bumped into something, you should almost like feel it, right? You should be existing like this movement between the two worlds. It's, it's kind of wild where it can take us. So that can also be added to this, right? So just to recap, I see a lot of these different areas, but I really, I specifically love the idea of the healthcare and changing it with a lot of sensors and a lot of data. And I just want to reiterate, like I said tomorrow, I don't mean a lot of data where that gets fed into the, um, to the patient. I'll just quickly say a story. This happened a couple of years ago. I was at a Friday night meal and I was sitting next to a nurse and we got talking. Uh, and then I had seen a couple of days earlier that someone, you know when people like redesign these things and put up mock-ups and they look really cool. So he had done this for like patient history. Like when you come out of a, um, like your hospital stay. So when you come out of the hospital, sometimes they give you like a printout of like the different medicines they gave you and like different things that happen like during your stay. And like, he had taken this ugly 10 page thing and put it into like two page, like kind of infographics and made it very, very uh, interesting and, and, and colors and everything. And I explained that to her, I'm like, why don't we do that? Like, that's a cool thing that we could do with medicine so people understand that. She said to me something very interesting. She said, have you ever thought that maybe that those are done on purpose? Sometimes when we see long words or scary sounding things as nurses or as doctors, we know what that is and we know that's good for you. But as a patient, if you don't know what it is, sometimes knowing too much or thinking you know too much, it'll actually scare you. This is a lot of, it's interesting, it's like people talk about misinformation or disinformation, sometimes it's not really that. It's you're hearing facts that you have no idea the context behind them and you or what you are fed has pieced those facts in the wrong manner and has given you another story, right? And they call this misinformation, disinformation today. But in the health world, what she was saying was, Sometimes we don't want to make it easily accessible. We don't want you to know exactly what you have because it might actually freak you out more. And so from then I was like, what we need is not to tell the person exactly what's happened, but we, we need a smart system that can itself read through what's happening in your body. And only when it gets a little concerned, maybe the first step it does is it sends that to your doctor and says, you know what, or sends it to someone else and says, I need an extra pair of eyes. I need someone else to check this out. And only then, when there's something that they want you to act upon and it becomes an action, then they tell you, maybe you should do this and this. Not that you have this and give you like a 10 letter word, that sounds really scary, but actually give you actions on what to do and what to improve and what to heal. So anyways, this is, this is kind of the vision of what I see for healthcare in the future. Part of it is coming from wearables in normal clothing or whether it's a second skin, a completely different area. When you piece apart clothing, form and function, when the function becomes incredibly powerful, whether it's regulating normal what normal clothes do, whether it's adding in all these health cares, all these extra crazy amount of sensors that will do phenomenal, it will change our world, preventative healthcare and, and sensing and understanding our body and, and also interfacing, controlling the augmented and virtual world. Um, this is going to be huge in whatever area it goes. Um, these are a lot of different parts that I see this going and I encompass into this idea called second skin. There are a lot of areas and I do, I, I did want to bring ideas and, and concepts and research. There's like one from MIT where they were using um, non-invasive, uh, they didn't actually have a sensor, but they had a camera that was able to te detect if you were a real human by watching the blood flow. They basically amplified different parts of your face and they they, they saw the, the, the minutest changes in the, the pigment of your skin and they amplify that and they can see that blood flow running and you can see a real uh, person. And that actually is part of a constant authentication video that I said before that would kill passwords. 
it ties a lot of these things together, but I'm gonna stop now because uh, I'm at 10 minutes, I'm out. So what I'll say to you guys is I will see you guys in the future. See ya.